Hey folks, Chris here at the Crab Apple Cottage. Today I wanted to do a garden tour. It is um, early to mid-June. I think it's oh, June 10th, I think, today. Um, and I haven't given a garden tour because I've been dealing with a lot of issues in my garden and it's it's frankly embarrassing to show off a messy garden, but the truth is most people's gardens aren't picture perfect, Pinterest ready. So um, I'll just show you my garden where it is today and the new things I've got and what I'm still um, planning to get this year. All right, so we'll start here in the front. I just have three um, fruit producing trees or bushes here in the front. I've got the two bushy ones are Nanking bush cherries and those are about three years old. And then in the middle, I have a Georgia red mayhaw tree that I actually purchased this spring um, mail order that came in. So my Nanking cherries, this is the first year that they've put on fruit. I got them in 2001. Let's see, get in here and see. There you go. So they're, they're a small cherry. Hold on. Let me... They're small and they have a pretty big pit in them. Um, uh, but it tastes good. They would be what I would call a, um, like a sour cherry. So this is the first year that I have cherries. I don't have a ton on it, but I didn't expect a ton anyways. So that's what's going on. All right, now we're going to move into the back. Here we go. I'll show you over here on the porch real quick. The porch is kind of like my plant nursery. When I get potted plants or bare root plants, um, for through mail, mail order, if I don't have a place to put them right away, I put them in pots. It also helps me monitor their health because sometimes bare root plants or plants that have been shipped don't do very well. They might die. So this way I can kind of monitor them and make sure they um, have a healthy start before I put them in my garden. Over here on this side, I've got some uh, pink and white currants that I received bare root that are doing well. Some may pop, a sweet shrub, um, a couple of fennel plants down there that I transplanted. They're looking a little sad. Over here, I've got some lettuces growing. And then in the box right there, I have Jerusalem artichokes. That's a first for me this year. I will be planting them in the garden. But I wanted to um, see how they grow and all that stuff. So those are going to be going in the food forest. Um, in those big tubs in the back, the two on the left are... French fingerling potatoes and the three on the right are sweet potatoes store-bought I took a store-bought sweet potato and I um, sprouted it indoors uh, early spring and got some slips and then planted the slips here I'll give it a close-up so you can see that so there we go there's my sweet potatoes um, the fingerling potatoes kind of went I kind of plant them a little late. They did have green shoots coming up, but I just recently topped them off with um, potting soil yesterday, so the shoots have been buried, so they'll be coming back up. Over here, I've got some various pots that either I've recently planted seeds or I'm getting ready to plant seeds. You can see there's a lot of perennial or medicinal herbs and um, perennial vegetables that I'm trying to start from a seed. In the back, I've got some bare root trees, pawpaw, that don't seem to be doing well, so I'm just keeping an eye on them. I think it's like my hospice, <laughs> hospice for plants. But you can see I've got all kinds of stuff growing here. Horseradish, Rosa Vergosa, ostrich fern, carpet raspberries, uh, marion berries, bayberry, ostrich fern, wild quinine. Arctic raspberries, witch hazel, huckleberry, wintergreen, cranberry, aronia berry, bloodroot, bearberry, all kinds of stuff. So anyways, this stuff, um, as it gets um, mature and bigger, I've been putting it in my garden and once I get a space cleared for it. Okay. Um, over here on this wall, I've planted, I have a clematis from this year, but I've planted a couple more clematises against this wall. Um, actually, this one I planted, I got free on Facebook last year. It hasn't bloomed. Um, and then I have one little baby clematis over here that I just got in through the mail. And I haven't, um, it hasn't done anything. It's just baby. In these big pots, I have my blueberries. These blueberries were planted in 2001 in the ground. And they have not done well. In fact, I actually had more blueberries than this. But they have not done well. You can actually see... 
So over there's a, a pink lemonade blueberry and a high bush blueberry. And these are three years old and they haven't produced. They are tiny, they've been struggling. So I decided to move them into pots and to amend the soil. This way I can keep track of the acidity a little bit better. So I put a lot of peat moss in there and then I fertilized with a um, acidifier fertilizer. So right now they're in the shade so that they can kind of adjust to their new location in the pots, but eventually they'll move out into the garden. I'm hoping that with them being in pots, I will have a better success rate with them because like I said, three years old, these things are tiny for being three years old. Okay, so this garden bed was expanded this year. It used to just go like straight across like that. So this part came out. I've got a T post here because I'm gonna be putting another um, hog panel trellis across there. Um, over here, I, I have moved some things around. I had a few other herbs. I had one of my blueberries there. I've transplanted all that stuff out and now this is my perennial salad garden or perennial greens. So I've got um, Salad Burnett, Good King Henry, Sorrel, Variegated Solomon Seal, Red Vein Sorrel, and some ostrich ferns back there. So these are all perennial, either perennial vegetables or perennial leafy greens. Um, and it gets a, like it gets morning sun right now. It's pretty early in the morning. I think it's like 10 or 11. I think 11. And it gets pretty good morning sun, but then in the afternoon it gets shaded by the garage to the left and this beautiful elderberry that I have going here. This elderberry is um, three years old as well. I got it as a bare root plant three years ago and it's beautiful. Um, it's I'm super happy with it. Last year was the first year that it produced berries, but I did not harvest them. I just kind of ran out of time and effort to, to deal with them, so I'm hoping to do something with it this year. Okay, so this bed over here was also expanded. Last year it was just a, a little narrow bed that went like that. And so this section is all new. You can see I put in more T-posts. Um, these two T-posts right here will eventually probably have hardy kiwi on them. Over here this on this trellis, this is a hardy kiwi, a prolific hardy kiwi. It's supposed to be self-fertile. Over on this side, I have planted a hardy kiwi Oh, I think this is the third time I've planted a hardy kiwi and every year they die on this side So I did plant another one a little baby down there. Hopefully we'll get that one going And then when I install this other trellis in front of it, I will um, Plant more hardy kiwis either maybe a different variety. I'm not hundred percent sure. So this bed was expanded um, I recently just actually weeded it and mulched it. I still have to get some more mulch some of the things look a little sad over here because I transplanted them. Like I said, this was, this was all new, this area in the front. So it didn't have any plants. So everything that you see in the front was transplanted this year. Um, the silver mound Artis, Artemisia, can't ever say that word, was transplanted a month or two ago. But the other plants um, are new transplants, so they're looking kind of sad. We've got Russian sage, uh, catnip, skullcap, and salvia and then in the back there we've got a couple different veronicas a pink and a purple veronica a nice hyssop and then here on the back side a couple different types of lavender and some purple joe pie weed so this bed i've kind of decided um is my purple and pinks perennial bed that's kind of what i'm going with here i'm going to make sure that there's always something purplish or pink blooming at all times um Flower beds, they're not permanent in many cases. You can move things around. So I've kind of been adjusting things, um, moving things around to kind of create the look that I want. As things grow in, I'm like, I don't like where that's located. It's too short or it's too tall, that sort of thing. Okay, across here, ooh, sun. Let me get out of the sun. Okay, so this bed, hopefully you can see, it's really hard to see the camera because of the sun. Uh, this bed is new this year too. The bed did just cut across like right here. It kind of made like a curvy path right here. So all of this is new this year. And in the middle of that, I have an Asian, a hardy Asian persimmon um, that is hardy down to zone six. And then, so that I planted a couple months ago, but then these herbs and flowers I've recently planted around it. I've got a rosemary arp. Arp is supposed to be the hardiest of the rosemaries, hardy down to zone six. I've tried rosemary in my garden a couple of times and each time they die. Um, so we're gonna try rosemary arp 
Over here, I've got some hummingbird mint, some really beautiful agastache. Three of those I picked up from the local nursery. In the back there, I have some poppies, orange poppies that are looking pretty sad because I transplanted them yesterday. Those I dug up from my mom's garden. Um, and then here is some St. John's wort that I'll be planting in the garden eventually. This part of the garden back here has not been weeded or trimmed or reconfigured or mulched or anything like that. But I've got some bronze fennel. I've got one, two, three, four, five bronze fennel plants. I started with one and they just seem to produce or reproduce. I've got some bee balm back there. That is the native Monarda. So it's kind of got like a lavender pink flower. Um, I've got some red hollyhocks back there. Up here in the front, I've got a variety of herbs. I've got sage, English thyme, pennyroyal, um, Roman chamomile, sweet woodruff, lemon thyme, purple sage, um, a lot, a whole bunch of different things. This big, tall behemoth is lovage. It's related to celery. It has a very strong celery flavor. You can use the leaves and replacement of celery like in soups or stuffing or something like that it's huge it gets huge every year and every year I'm like oh, I should move it but um, it does kind of anchor this corner and it blocks a little bit it blocks the AC unit and the cellar door so plus the flowers are beneficial they attract um, parasitic wasps and different butterflies and stuff so it's actually a beneficial plant to have in the garden because of what it attracts so we're going to swing back across the aisle here. This bed, again, is a bed that I need to rework. This is the same size it was last year, but I haven't had a chance to get in there and weed and deadhead and mulch. Um, but if we've got chives over there in the right corner that have expired, the blooms have expired, I need to trim those back. Uh, garlic chives. I did have whorehound, but the plant died. Um, but there's little whorehound babies around it, so I will plant those. Um, that bee balm back there is a beautiful red. I think it's called Jacob Klein. You can see my beautiful yellow yarrow is coming in. That's little moonshine yarrow. I actually might move that to a different spot. And in the back of the bed, two massive um, lavender plants that the bees are just all over. Um, those have filled in really nicely. Here's my bee balm coming in on the first little flower. It's, that's not, that's an immature flower, but it's a bright red. It's so pretty when it blooms. I tried to do a video when it blooms. Um, so then I've planted this grape arbor. This is the third year for the grape arbor here. This is Hemrod Seedless Green Grapes. You can see it's got lots of grapes on it. Um, last year I got my first harvest off of my grapes i combined my red or no, it's not my red my green and my purple grapes and made grape jelly it was delicious and then this year i planted some new grapes on either side where i'm going to be putting the new trellis um and i can't remember what they are off the top of my head one is a seedless red grape and oh what is the other one i can't remember i need to get my signs out here this is why i have signs on everything because i can never remember Okay, we're going. We're walking into the back part of the garden that is out of control. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen that I've been dealing with um, thistles. So I'm still working on the thistle situation, but it's not been a priority. I've just been trying to keep them cut so that I can, you know, deal with other parts of the garden. Over here in this mess, I've got a couple of rhubarb plants, a hardy fig, and some marshmallow back there. But this whole bed needs to be reworked. The Rosa Ragosa is going to go in here. I'm not sure what else. Same thing over here. I did get into this bed earlier this week and cut back or pulled most of the big thistles. Um, I've got some cone flowers growing in there. Some, what is that, cat mint, um, Ozark beauties or whatever the yellow ones are. I can't remember. Buttercups, I can't remember. And then another grapevine with lots of baby grapes. And this variety is the Mars Seedless Grape. So I've got three, currently have three arbors. This one here, and then two going that way. Oh, I do have this one here. This grape arbor here in the middle of the thistles. I did plant some, um, what did I plant? Muscadine grapes. And they died. Again, this is the second year I've planted grapes here and they have died. I don't know if they're getting choked up by the thistles or what. 
so I need to replant <laughs> grapes there. So, and then this little, this is a new grape here on the other side, so I gotta put a new trellis in there. So a lot of work on the north side of the garden. Um, I like to come back to the east side of the garden where things are still <laughs> clean and organized. But basically I've been like working my way um, that direction, trying to clean up the beds as I go and deal with the thistles. Um, digging the thistles out didn't really work, so I'm going to try digging and spraying. I've tried burning with a propane torch. Um, some things I read said that once you get it all out, you need to just heavily mulch it or put plastic down and overplant with other plants so that, um, because I guess thistles really like light, so if you, if you cut the light, they'll die. So, anyways, I'm just going to keep working on it. Over here is my chicken coop. I got, I owe you guys a video tour of my chicken coop, but there's a few little things that I still want to do to fix it up before I do the tour. So that is going to be forthcoming. Little bonfire area, and then the back, I just got all the leftover supplies for my chicken coop that I need to deal with. Here are my raised beds. Um, I have three, four, five, 15, 16 raised beds right now, and I need to put two more in that are gonna go right here. In all of my pots along the edges, I've got things like mints um, and a few other seeds that I've started. I have a random tomato that I transplanted, that sort of thing. This bed has potatoes and tomatoes, and before you come at me, I know you're not supposed to plant potatoes and tomatoes together. However, this bed was supposed to be tomatoes, and it has three tomatoes in there that I planted from seed and started in seed inside. And then I found out that it also has potatoes. <laughs> so this was a potato bed last year. And um, apparently I missed quite a few potatoes because the potatoes have come back. This bed is onions. They're not doing so great. They weren't in good condition. This, These are some strawberries that I dug up out of a bed and I just threw in here. I don't know if they're going to make it, but they really weren't producing that much. These are my bush green beans chocolate mint. Um, this is planted with collards, no, cabbage, maybe cabbage and collards. I can't remember, but definitely cabbage is in here, and that got in kind of late. It definitely should be a lot farther along than this, but um, it was kind of a rough spring. Over here, this bed, I was going to plant spinach, and instead I got a bunch of compost from a friend, and the compost had all this lamb's quarter these seeds in it and they all sprouted so I was going to harvest the lamb's quarter because you can eat it just like spinach um, but the problem is if I can get in here and show you is that I've got a major major aphid infestation um, so I haven't been eating the lamb's quarter because of the aphids I actually just ordered 3,000 ladybugs online uh, this morning, so I'm going to be dispersing those throughout the garden. In the meantime, I've just been pulling this um, lamb's eater, it's not lamb's ear, lamb's quarters and giving it to my chickens. They just kind of pick through it. Here's my ladies. Hi, girls. Hi, babies. I don't have any grubs for you. One of their favorite things is when I'm gardening, um, we get a lot of grubs. So I just dig those up and I feed them to the chickens and they love it. Back here, it's a little messy, <clears throat> but back here I've got my berry canes. Right now I've got five different varieties of berry canes growing. Um, I still have to move the blackberries back to the sixth spot. Uh, but I got red raspberries, yellow raspberries, boysenberries, loganberries, black raspberries, and then I'll have the blackberries back here. Over here, under my crab apple tree, um, this eventually is going to be a shade garden for obvious reasons. And the only thing I have planted back here are two hazelnuts. I planted those last year. Um, they're not doing so great. It might be because there's too much shade. There's one. These were like bare root last year. This one I thought had died, but it's coming back. So. Um, we'll see, but this whole area has to be planted. I did put an autumn olive over here, uh, but that didn't seem to make it. <clears throat> All right, so berry canes. I got to get in here and trim and trim these up and um, secure some of them to the wire. This is my yellow raspberry variety, I think it is, and you can see it's got quite a few berries on it. 
Okay, so this bed is potatoes that I actually planted. <laughs> it's just a, a Burbank, Russet Burbank potato, which is um, stores for a long time on your shelf. And then this is, what did I just plant here? Corn, sweet corn. I just planted sweet corn here uh, yesterday in this bed. I'm very late getting some of my things planted. This bed, actually, I had put compost in it from my friend and it was full of lamb's quarters as well. So I had to pull all that and put um, store-bought compost in it. This is my asparagus bed. It's done for the year. Um, I planted, what did I plant in there? Melons, maybe? I think I planted some cantaloupe along the bottom of it. I can't remember. This bed has got potatoes in it, but again, this is not a bed that I planted with potatoes this year. This is last year's potatoes that are coming back. There are some green peppers in there as well. They, I might have to move them to a different location. This bed over here is tomatoes that I did not start from seed. I planted a massive grape tomato plant, well, like a baby tomato plant that grew massive. I planted it in, I think, 2020, and it has literally produced tomato plants for me every year since then, just by spreading its seed. So I haven't had to plant cherry tomatoes in, this is the fourth year now. Um, so I just pick up the strongest ones, weed out the rest, plant the, the strongest ones and have those growing. I also have a couple green peppers in here and then I interplanted with, I can't remember, I need to mark my, my veggie bits. I have them listed inside on my map, but I interplanted with um, melon or squash or something like that, a pumpkin maybe, I can't remember. So then all along my trellises, you can see here I've got hog panel trellises. <clears throat> I planted all kinds of climbing things. I've got a couple of rows of uh, sweet peas. I've got pumpkins, watermelon, cantaloupe, cucumbers, zucchini, spaghetti squash, butternut squash, um, winter squash, I think two different types of pumpkins. So those are all along um, the trellises. You can see here, I think those are zucchini coming up and then I have five more raised beds back there that are full of weeds and thistle that I need to deal with so we're not gonna we're not gonna look at that part of the garden we're gonna ignore that part of the garden because I only have so much time in the day but I will show you this these are my Egyptian walking onions I got like six Egyptian walking walking onion ball bells two years ago and I planted them in this garden and Clearly, they have spread, which is what I wanted. Um, and then I broke off some of these baubles last year and planted them next to it. So these are the, the second year Egyptian walking onions. So I've got, these are a perennial onion. They're called walking onions because these tops get heavy and they bend over and they, they root into the ground. So this one here is kind of, kind of doing that. Um, and so they kind of walk across your garden. So these are great for like a green onion. Um, and you can also dig up the bulbs at the bottom, but they're kind of small. But basically I have endless, endless onions now and onion flavor um, because of this patch going in. Yeah, so we're not going to look too much at the back. That's my orchard that's overrun with thistles right now, which I've got to deal with because they're in flower. And if I don't get them, get rid of them, um, we're going to have a major problem. <laughs> I have been kind of pulling them back here. These are my strawberries, which I haven't been picking them as much as I should because of the thistles. But I think you can see that there's quite a few strawberries in there. These, this variety, which I can't remember off the top of my head, is a very prolific producer, but they're kind of small. So I think I might plant a different variety of strawberry um, elsewhere in my garden. I've got a variety called Whopper from Gurney's that produces very large berries. So I think I'm going to plant the, the Whopper variety in the other parts of my garden once I get it cleared out. So here's all my fruit trees <clears throat> surrounded in the sea of thistle. I've got everything here. Peach, plum, apple, pear, cherry, uh, nectarine, plum cot. I've got an almond back there. And then in between I've got a variety of berry bushes. I've got honeyberry, um, different kinds of Gooseberry, Josta berry, hardy fig, goji berry, mm, what am I missing? Mulberry, dwarf mulberry, currants, 
all kinds of things. So this is my um, my project this year. I've just been working my way towards the west side of the garden. Sorry about that. I was um, talking about my orchard and food forest and my phone overheated and shut off automatically. So I have to go back and um, wrap up this video. But anyways, yeah, so the food forest orchard over there on the, I keep saying west, but it's actually the north side of the property. Um, needs a lot of work. I've got to get in there and get those thistles out. At least chop down to the ground level before they go to seed. Um, I was going to show you over here. This patch is blackberries that I intended to move to the back of my garden, back by the rest of the berry canes this spring, but um, I got caught up with chicken coop um, construction, so it didn't happen. So I guess I will try to move them next year because they already have flowers on them this year. But there you go, guys. That is a tour of my quarter acre backyard garden and homestead. Before it was just a garden, but as far as I'm concerned, when I have chickens, that made it a homestead. As far as future plans, this area back here eventually will be um, a more official uh, seating area with bonfire. And I'm also thinking about putting a pond back there. I'm actually wondering if I could put a pond back here where this like messy brush pile slash compost is. If I could put a pond back here that's deep enough to overwinter catfish, I'd really like to try raising some aquatic food critters um, like catfish or maybe some other fish. And then I also would like to try to grow some aquatic plants, edible medicinal aquatic plants. So that is the plan for back here in this corner. Um, over here, like I said, this is all construction debris from the chicken coop that I've got to deal with. Over here, um, you can see why I haven't shown off my chicken coop because I still have to finish painting one side. But um, I am installing a rain barrel to um, get water off the roof that I can use to either go into my um, pond or to water to the chickens. Um, so yeah, there we go, quarter acre homestead. All of this has been done since pretty much 2001. In 2020, I put in two, these two front raised beds, like, like right here, these two right here. I put those in and I planted, I think I had that one cherry tomato plant and like a couple of green bean plants and that's it. That's all I did in 2020. Um, so the rest of this has been since 2021. So now it is spring, well, summer 2023. So we're going on the third growing season. Before that, this was all yard. The only thing that was back here, I mean, none of this was here. None of these bushes, none of these trees, none of these grapevines, um, none of the flower beds. The deck wasn't even actually there. The fence wasn't either. The only thing that was back here was that big crab apple tree that you see back there. Hence, crab apple cottage. That is literally the only thing growing back here besides grass um, in 2020. So since 2021, all this I've been put in. So I'm hoping that eventually, once I get things fully planted out in the food forest orchard area back there, it won't require quite so much maintenance. But right now with the thistle situation, um, it's obviously requiring a lot of work. But everything else is doing great. I'm loving it. It's really exciting to see as things grow and fill in. Um, you know, new flower beds obviously look very sparse, whereas the old ones are filling in nicely. But I'm very excited. But that's it. That's, that's my tour, my June 10th tour of my um, backyard homestead and garden. If you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later.